EBTD, everything Biden touches dies. Today, we are presented with an op-ed written by none other than the president of the United States of inflation. And get this, the topic in the Wall Street Journal of the op-ed is his takedown or his take on how he's going to bring down inflation. President Joe Obama, the very creator of the inflation nation we're struggling to survive, is now suggesting he has the answers to his own crisis. These politicians think we're fools, and that makes them the fools, because I've been showing you exactly how he created this ter terrible dilemma we're in in America. The most prosperous nation in the world, yet we're struggling to buy gas and food. At times, families have to decide to buy gas or food, again, in America. And now we can't find baby formula. We're literally begging foreign countries to save Biden's ass with baby formula. Germany and Mexico first, then Australia and England now. Everything Biden touches dies, EBTD. Today, for the 22nd day in a row, gas prices have broken through to an all-time new high. Never before has a gallon of gasoline averaged $4.62 a gallon in America. But I've been telling you this was coming, and guess what? There's far more pain at the pump on its way. Just today, crude oil spiked to a two-decade high, meaning I believe gas will break not just $5 a gallon soon. No, I believe it'll go over $6 per gallon. Unless Joe Obama does something to stop the upward dizzying spiral of higher prices. But Joe Obama has no intention to do what it takes to slow the spread of inflation. He's doing about as good a job of stopping inflation as he was in slowing the spread of COVID. The single most effective thing we can do to stop the spread of COVID wear a mask. The head of the CDC. Well, that was November fall. 2020. And now 18 months later, a million Americans lay dead. Everything Biden touches dies, EBTD. So why would inflation and gas prices be any different? It won't. And it hasn't been. Just look at the two times Joe Obama has tried to do something to stop the rising gas prices. What did he do? He released oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve in November 2021 and April 2022. And guess what? Both times Biden released oil from the SPR, the results were the same. Oil spiked higher. In November, oil was $73 per barrel, and it's now $125 per barrel, meaning oil went up 71% since Joe Obama's first release. And like a Democrat, when it doesn't work the first time, keep doing the same thing and hope for a different result. So in April, Joe Obama released more of our emergency strategic oil reserves. And guess what happened? I'll give you a minute to think about it. Once again, just after the release, oil surged upward again from $97 a barrel this time at the time to again $125 per barrel today, up 28% in just a couple of weeks. That means gas will go up another dollar at least before this ends. Likely much more than that, too. Because all Obama and Biden know how to do is release more emergency oil. And the global oil market knows that will never work. It's a temporary fix, a Band-Aid on a hemorrhaging gash. Everything Biden, <clears throat> Joe Obama touches, dies. By the way, who's advising these fools on their economics? Britney Spears? OK, don't be a hater. Nice girl, but she clearly can't do math. And get this, aside from refusing to restart the two major pipeline projects, and aside from incentivizing oil and gas production companies here in the U.S., those two policies, by the way, would drive down oil immediately, literally overnight, there's another thing they should do but won't. Did you know the last material that the major refinery in America was built in 1976? That's exactly right. America hasn't built a major refinery in over 46 years. Just to give you a little context and idea of how long ago that actually was, the top song was Silly Love Songs, Wings. Carter was president. Top movie was Rocky. Top TV show was Happy Days. Fashion looked like this. <laughs> Milk was a buck 68. Oh, and gas? Well, gas was 57 cents per gallon. So yeah, it's been a really long time since we built a refinery here in America. That's a major reason why we pay so much. We're importing, ready for this? 1.7 billion gallons of gasoline every single year from foreign countries. 1.7 billion gallons every single year, that's insanity. 
Now, are you sitting down right now because you want to know who we buy the most gasoline from? Which country would tick you off the most right now, folks? That's right, Russia. Russia is our number one seller of foreign gasoline into our American cars. Great job, Joe Obama. Way to go. We need to drill here and refine here and now so we can get off the foreign oil junk. And more importantly, we need to get off our Russian gasoline fix, too. And can we talk about switching to electric cars for just a minute? Something Joe Obama and the new Green New Deal squadsters are so sure will solve America's problems. Joe Obama and the communists running D.C. desperately want Americans to abandon gasoline-powered cars and adopt electric vehicles, EVs. Of course, as a weekly communicant in the church of the Green New Deal, Biden forgets that 80 percent of an EV's volt system stems from disgusting natural gas, right there, 38.3 percent, nasty coal, 21.8 percent, and glow-in-the-dark nuclear, 18.9 percent. That leaves only 20 percent that flows from their beautiful windmills and their gorgeous solar panels and their renewable but fish-scaring hydropower and other green sources. Biden could care less that inflation-depleted consumers will struggle to buy these largely fossil-fuel-fueled EVs. According to Kelly Blue Book, average prices for a new EV ran six, almost $66,000, look at it right there, in March, versus $46,000 across the auto industry. That's 43.6% higher. Just the facts, folks. They seem to hate the facts when it doesn't work out for them. Another inconvenient truth here Magic wands don't manufacture EVs. Building them requires a lot of natural resources. Many are too rare to meet Biden's fantasy production expectations. Listen to this. Lithium. Lithium is scarce. Lithium is a key electric vehicle component. And lithium prices skyrocketed 438% this year alone in April versus last April. Elon Musk said he called it insane levels. Also, while you can build a battery a factory in two years, it takes up to 10 years to bring on lithium production, enough and ready to use for cars. Let's continue along those lines for just a minute, shall we? Traditional cars use anywhere between 25 and 50 pounds of copper each car. Now, according to copper.org, EVs need 183 pounds of copper per car, five times that of traditional gas cars. And get this, while nickel is another key EV ingredient, obviously Biden and Obama are encouraging copper and nickel production, right? Right? Wrong. Biden's Interior Department just January canceled a huge mining project. Chilean-based Antofagasta, Antofagasta had planned a twin metals project, copper and nickel mine in Minnesota. Perfect, right? Last fall. Also last fall, the White House slapped a 20-year mining ban on that state's Boundary Waters region killing another proposed major copper mine. Again, everything Biden touches dies. And not to mention this little problem for their evil plan for America, as it is there are only about a million electric cars on American roads right now. That represents about 2% of all vehicles. How did these tree-hugging politicians, by the way, clearly not a single engineer among them, how did these tree-hugging politicians plan to get more vehicles charged up As it is, California and New York are already warning about rolling brownouts and all-out blackouts this summer. You see, there are very few, very, very important issues these people forget. Our power grid is like a massive spider web stretching across the whole country. If there's a heat wave and huge demand in, say, Bakersfield, California, they have to first find extra power somewhere, anywhere, even if it's outside the Bakersfield system. Then they have to do what's called daisy chain the power from other places, meaning sell to the next town, find some power there, and then sell to the next town, and then over and over and over again, sell to the next town, all the way to Bakersfield. That is extremely inefficient and very expensive. That's why adding millions of electric cars is just not feasible at this time, and not to mention, where are all those charging stations gonna go? All along I-95? and other roadways and every other highway in America? How ugly will that be? I recommend putting AOC's face on all of those charging stations and all those ridiculous power cores and structures. And the waiting line, folks, just fill up, right? Just fill up, fill up with power, right? It takes time. Whereas gas up in five minutes and be on your way. And furthermore, do they realize that all that power they'll need generated for all those expensive new electric vehicles comes from somewhere, right? I mean, 
They didn't think you just plug it in and power comes from the universe, did they? Unicorns and electric cars. Oh, so AOC. Nope, sorry, most of that power is generated from that evil fossil fuel supply, natural gas, God forbid, coal. Account for 60% of electricity production in America. Add another 20% for the other fuel they hate, nuclear. And 80% of our power generation comes from fuels that the leftists in D.C. hate. So why not just use oil and gas until your beloved renewables, wind, solar, and water power grow up to be actual sources? Not like now. They aren't even toddlers yet. More like little babies sucking off the government teat for nourishment. Sorry for the visual, but it's real, and the struggle is real. And the left's left hand doesn't even know what their right hand is doing. And they're failing and failing America on a daily basis. Biden promised unity and normalcy after the Trump years. Instead, America's lost in space, puppet in chief pumps pain, poverty, and policy incoherence by the tank full with no end in sight. Everything Biden touches dies.